Tonight, Stephen Colbert couldn't make it to California. There's too many bears and too many gays here. But I've got all the awkward faculty interviews you need. Plus, I've got better hair. This is the Colbert Report. Nation, since the beginning of fall quarter this year, graduate students attending the Tuesday morning BBC Journal Club have been terrorized and humiliated by one Dr. B.K. Shoikit. Dr. Shoikit forces the students to sit in the front of the room and ask questions at the end of the talk. As you may know, I appeared at BBC Journal Club on October 31st and challenged Dr. Shoikit on his actions. In fact, I put him on notice. As a result of my scathing criticisms, Dr. Shoikit has agreed to appear on my show tonight to defend himself. I presume he's here to apologize. Dr. Shoikit, welcome to the show. Pleased to be here, Stephen. Right. Stephen, I, before actually, we begin, <laughs> let us pray. <laughs> All right, well. I would like to pray I... to my colleagues for forgiveness for what I'm about to commit. So, um, do you have anything you want to say for yourself about your uh, behavior at the BBC Journal Club? Yes, I think I've been far too lax. When I was a graduate student, mm -hmm. we would get up half an hour before we went to sleep, work 24 hours a day, we're incredibly productive, never complained. And you spent those 24 hours a day developing... Asking for more. Docking, yes. Uh -huh. Docking, uh -huh. among other things. Uh -huh. Which has gotten us where exactly? I mean, you guys, you couldn't even cure uh -huh. cancer when you guys were when you were in graduate school. I mean, what 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 have you really done? What have we you really well, published? we did cure cancer, but we didn't want to let anyone know. Oh really? It, it would have ended funding. Now, since I have you here, um, I have a few scientific questions for you to start out with. Since this is, of course, CCSF. Are you prepared? I am prepared. Okay. Now, um, I don't read scientific papers. Um, as you know, if you watch the show, I actually don't read anything at all. Um, but my friends tell me that you work on docking or virtual screens. Is that correct? That is correct. OK. So um, why do you use virtual screening on actual molecules? Why not use actual screening? I mean, a small molecule discovery center is like right across the hall. In fact, I know a guy there. I can get you in. I have run from reality all my life. I have made a career of running from reality. That is why we virtually screen. Okay, so if you're going to use virtual screening, then in that case, why use virtual screening on actual molecules? Why not virtual molecules? I mean, don't you want to just invent the best possible imaginary molecule that could fit in the active site? That's a beautiful idea. That'll keep us from getting anywhere for many, many years and ensure repeated rounds of NIH funding on a point, completely pointless task. And how is that different from what you're doing right now? <laughs> no, it's a, it's a better version of what we're doing. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so I hope I get credit for that when you start doing a virtual screening on imaginary molecules. When you become a faculty member, we'll give you credit. But until that time, we're going to take all your good ideas, treat them as our own, and go around the country talking about them. Well, I'm, I'm the one with a TV show, so we'll see we'll see how well that works out. Yeah. Um, so, like I said, there's there's a lot of criticism of Doc out there, but um, but you're you've been sticking with it. You're uh, you're not going anywhere. You're. Uh, commitment to a completely sealed hermetic life of the mind. Why why not move on to something more successful, more useful, where you'll actually get results? Well, you know. I've been thinking about moving into high throughput screening myself because lately it's becoming ever more apparent that it is a good competitor for docking in terms of being a completely hermetically sealed, um, largely useless technique that produces almost entirely false positive artifacts. Oh, really? Uh -huh. So what you're saying is that you're starting to consider the possibility of cutting and running from virtual screening. That'd be a 
Well, no, okay. I think just widening our scope to a field almost as hallucinogenic as our own. Uh -huh. Okay. And a scope, a, a field, uh, a, a hallucinatory field in which vastly more resources have been committed to. Not unlike the war in Iran. So yes, so you're considering the possibility of moving on into Iran. <laughs> That's right. I prefer to think of Iran as sort of East Iraq. East Iraq, yeah. Whereas uh, high throughput screening is East docking. East docking. You you mentioned false positives a moment ago, and uh, another thing that your lab works on is um, you guys study these hydrophobic balls, which are false positives. Yes. Correct. Yes. So um, my question for you is: um, Is there anyone in your lab who has balls which are true positive? <laughs> no, but I think it's fair to say that we have the biggest balls of them all. All right. Um, Dr. Schuchat, since our confrontation on October 31st, um, I've learned that you are actually Canadian. I now have a, a better um, understanding of what's been going on. You're actually trying to impose your Canadian values on us American graduate students. Uh, yes, that's, that's right. Yeah, yeah. By the way, are you an illegal immigrant? <laughs> no, I'm, 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 a, I'm a legal immigrant. Can I see your green card, please? I don't have it on. You don't have it on you. Interesting. Okay, so what are you going to do if, I don't know, someone from the INS were to run through the door and... <laughs> uh, would it get me out of this interview? I caught Brian Stroke again! How about that? Yeah, he's smoking Brian? pipe this time. How are you today? Very good. You are surprisingly calm. All right. Good day. I, I hope you guys are going to edit this, right? <laughs>